All right, we're back for another another week, another week down. Can't believe it's already Friday, two thirty in the afternoon. Weeks flown by, but we are make it happen with uh, more simplest property inspections. And for those of you who are just turning tuning in for the first time. My name is Chase Kerr. I'm the marketing executive here at Morrison Plus Property Inspections, and I'm here with our founder, Dwayne Morrison. Um, and we are here to uh, just shed some light and information and just kind of just share what we have to say in terms of franchising, uh, business mindset, home inspections, uh, and all those kind of great things in between. Um, like I said, I cannot believe it's already Friday, 3 o'clock. This week has flown by. Yes. Uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, it definitely went by quickly. Yeah, I feel like the last, I think the last podcast we mentioned, I couldn't believe January was already over, and now we're already into February, and the first, uh, what's the date today? Not the first week all the way, but um, not a full weekend yet, but we're getting there, and things are happening, things are moving and grooving, and it's uh, it's pretty crazy to see all the things it takes to set up for the entire year ahead of us. Uh, we've been working pretty diligently here at the uh, corporate office, and trying to tee ourselves up for success. Well, um, I think that's why the week, I think that's why the week went by so quickly is because you know, we were we were been pouring over all the data from last year, you know, and trying to you know, pull things together and look at, at what it means and uh, you know, when when you're enthusiastic about what you're trying to put together as far as a plan, then you know, time flies. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I could tell you right now the last two days going over the marketing expenses and trying to sort out and allocate where the money is going and coming from and right. all the all the fun things that account, accountants like to do. Uh, but I'm not an accountant, so it's not necessarily all that fun. But it, uh, it definitely makes time fly by throughout the day when you're just grinding away and just getting it, getting it done, making it happen, like as we like to say, right? So. Well, I mean, we were in my office, I think, for almost an hour and a half the other morning, and you know, we were going over all the statistical numbers that you were giving me as you kind of charted out, you know, what went, what expense expenditures went to what accounts, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, we were trying to to banter back and forth, and some of the things you got to think about when you're when you're reviewing what you did. Um, especially when it comes to your numbers and expenses is, well, what numbers do you need, right? So you can plan ahead. Sometimes people make mistakes because they'll take a certain, uh, a certain section of, of money that they're spending in an area and they, they just title the area they're spending the money, money in, in the books, right? When really you want to title that in a reporter in, in, in a way that, you can understand what you're going to compare and contrast like you were talking about with your uh information you gave me about what Je- jeff bezos said from amazon for like planning five years ahead right mm-hmm. um so you you want to take what you're doing to put it i like to say put it in buckets mm-hmm. guys typically understand because we like to compartmentalize it and when you put things in buckets we can understand uh, uh I, I think there was a, a couple of things we were talking about as far as trying to make three different categories on our marketing. So, and we were trying to figure out how to even title them so we could understand, you know, what money went to digital marketing to Google as opposed to monies that went to just using promo materials and calling in offices, Mm -hmm. right? It's all marketing, but we want to be able to quantify what our ROI is, our rate of return uh, for, for each so we can compare and contrast it next year and the following year. Yeah, and it's really easy. And we were almost falling into the trap of like over categorizing things in a sense where it's like, oh, well, that's technically not fully this, but it kind of is. And so put that down there as a category. And next thing you know, you're looking at like this list of like 15 different <laughs> areas you now have to categorize. And you're like, wait, now this was supposed to be max four or five kind of deal. And right. Like, because if you, and that the whole, I guess the moral of this is when you plan accordingly, things come together a whole lot easier. And when you track accordingly, things come together easier. But when you're in the stages of trying to kind of sort things out, it becomes easy to, um, I don't know necessarily if I have the word for it, but essentially take something that should be simplified and make it harder than it needs to be. Well, in, you want to keep it as, you want to keep things. I mean, and this sounds cliche, simple, stupid, Yep. right? You want to keep Absolutely. things as simple as possible. However, 
one one of the the struggles is is okay you can do simple things and not and do it somewhat haphazardly actually Mm -hmm. in the beginning build up a base right so say Mm -hmm. you're going to start a new business and you build up a base of i don't know 20 or 30 people that use you on a regular basis and you have i don't know two or three four hundred thousand dollars in sales a year right well now you got to look at because you're you have now you have overhead you you can spend money but how do you go from there to a million a year in sales? You got it. You have to be able to look at what you've done in a way that's comprehensible and simple, mm-hmm. and be able to c- contrast that to what's working and be and be able to try new things. You know, um, like right now, I mean, we're talking to some larger marketing firms mm-hmm. to try some new things, but we need to know what we've been doing to be able to quantify their proposals as being something that we want to, you know, maybe take a risk on. Yeah, it's all about, I mean, there's risk in anything, right? Uh, but being able to have statistical data to be able to kind of back up a decision that you made is going to make your life a whole lot easier. I, w- I think more times than not because if numbers numbers don't, don't like to lie typically, right? And so when you have, if you're able to chart something and keep track of something over a longer period of time and it, the numbers say what, say what it is, you can... If you'd make an educated guess, you'd probably be going with what those numbers are telling you uh, more times than not. And I mean, if if you're do if you're in an industry that's not super duper high risk, mm-hmm. uh, super duper high risk numbers can fluctuate like yep. you know zero to a hundred, right? Um, conservative, more uh, uh, stable industries, that doesn't happen, right? It just I mean there might be fluctuations, but um, you can rely on statistical you know. S- stats essentially and, and stats are accurate man mm-hmm. i mean there's a margin of error but i mean that margin of error you don't go outside of that absolutely um and so I, I i think it's important to understand that we might be talking about you know the importance of you know building your business and uh trying to because we were talking about new year's resolutions before but trying to plan for the coming year um don't think that because you're just starting out, you don't have to do that. It, you have to do it from day one. Um, uh, th- there's still a lot of things that are going on as far as what you're spending money on. Even if it's four hundred, three or four hundred dollars a month on marketing, mm-hmm. well, now it, you know it might not be critical that that you didn't don't spend it right, but it kind of really is even more critical that it's all pointed in, in the right direction. Yeah, imagine imagine spending. 400 bucks a month for a full year, but you didn't track what you spent your money on out of that, out of, out of what's 12 times 400. That's $4,800. $4,800. There you go. Quick math. My brain's fogged up in the afternoon. (laughs) Um, so so so, so let's say $5,000 a year you're spending in marketing, but you never decided to jot down in a journal where that $200 charge came from or where that $300 charge came from or any of that. Unless you just hit it right every single time, which you probably didn't if it's your first time doing it. Right. <laughs> Unless you hit it right every single time, you are now at a disadvantage because now you have the opportunity to go screw up and spend bad money again because you just never tracked it to begin with. And yeah. so that's where planning ahead and keeping track of your business and just sorting things out accordingly. And like you said, even if you're brand new to something, doesn't mean it's not it doesn't mean that you Obviously, you're going to make mistakes. Obviously, there's a learning curve. Sure. But if you don't sit down and critically think about the decisions you're making and how to plan those accordingly in a strategic manner, um, then you're kind of putting yourself, you're digging a hole for yourself in a lot of ways. Well, look, you're not going to remember. I don't remember what I did six months ago. No. Even even if I only made a couple of purchases on marketing, okay, maybe I can remember those two purchases, but I mean, I, I, now I got to remember what did I get from it amongst everything else that happened in my life over the last six months. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, you know, it's like, you know, how old am I? You know? Yeah. And, and, and nobody's perfect, right? I mean, I know when we were going through it and no, I mean, everyone's supposed to keep track of their receipts, right? When you're, they're spending on business things, supposed but, to. but obviously receipts are very easy to lose. They're those right. crumpled up pieces of paper. They get mixed up with a napkin. They, you pull right. out whatever trash in your pocket, they go with it, they get mixed up. But if you're at least tracking, like I was able to, I was fortunate enough to have a pretty detailed calendar of last year of all the events I went to. Mm-hmm. And I see the transaction date for the expense and I could go trace it back and be like, oh, you know what? 
I was at a charity dinner that night and that's where I bought a cocktail for a realtor or whatever that looks like kind of deal. Right. Now I could trace it back and being able to keep a detailed account of stuff because again, like you said, no one's perfect. You're not gonna remember everything and you're certainly not gonna remember to keep all your receipts. Uh, I know right. like I, I right, walk right. out of places and I'm like, I forgot the receipt and like it's just it it's is good what to it maybe is, just have a, a bucket or a box to throw them in it and is. you can scan them in and just throw them in to the uh, box for or scan them in just for the year um yeah, i don't know how many times jason and i have walked out of place buying some paperwork you gotta have it <laughs> i mean so you know i mean look uh so what do you do when, once you kind of pour over the information you had and you say you kept decent records right and you look at it um, at that point, you, you know, whether it's marketing, whether it's operations, whether it's, you know, just paper for the copier, right. Mm -hmm. Um, or your subscriptions to Microsoft 365 or, uh, uh, you know, QuickBooks online or, or, you know, if you own, if you own a business, you have four or five monthly subscriptions, mm -hmm. um, you just, you know, cable or maybe internet, right. Yep. You know, a, a VoIP phone system or cell phones or whatever it is. What do you do with that information? You know, you, you, you need to you need to think critically about what you're doing with the information so you can make decisions to plan ahead. Um, right now, one of the things that I've been we're, we're really working hard on <laughs> uh, and I, I actually forgot to mention it, quite frankly, and we, we just had a sales meeting this afternoon and I didn't mention that one of the unique things about owning a franchise business is you are you don't have to worry about inflation. Didn't mention that mm -hmm. in the whole meeting. That's like one of the biggest sales, like check marks, feather in our cap yep. things you can have. As you own your own business, inflation doesn't impact you. If if the price of milk goes up, that's that's a retail item. It's, you can't control that. Well, guess what? You're selling a home inspection. Price of home inspection is gonna go up with the rate of inflation. So mm -hmm. your income will always match inflation. Um, and it's, but you know, it's just a matter of organizing those kinds of things. So it's not just about your expenses and what you did. It's about organizing and planning your presentations for the coming year as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I like what you mentioned earlier, because like what, can we, what we spoke about before the podcast was I was listening to an interview of Jeff Bezos and hate him or love him. Uh, some people have mixed feelings about the guy, but sure. reality is he owns the large, one of the largest businesses next to Tesla. Um, and one of the richest men in the world, right? So he's doing something right in terms of business. Uh, well, I don't think anybody's going to argue planning, his business right. acumen is 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 something to behold. Absolutely. And I what surprised me, what intrigued me in the interview I watched was him talking about how he actually plans ahead five years in advance. So any of the updates that Amazon is curr currently has this year were essentially planned probably four to five years ago. And obviously that's kind of hard to do on a smaller scale like for instance for us because we're transitioning do a lot of different things and don't have necessarily the resources that jeff bezos might have uh right. to fund things and make things happen a certain way however there's ways you could do that for yourself obviously in your own business and planning ahead and just simple things like how we're talking about here of setting out your expectations for the year tracking your expenses tracking what you're doing so that way you could come back full circle of December or January when it's slow again, and you can make educated decisions on what your direction is going to be for the following year. Right. Um, and then even the following year after that, if you really want to start stretching it out and start thinking long-term big picture type of stuff. Well, I think that one of the reasons they're able to go out five years is because they use a lot of technology. Yes, absolutely. You know, and technology takes a, a minute to develop. Mm -hmm. Um, and they have infrastructure and logistical and, and machinery robotics and they're, you know, that, you know, they're, they're two or three years out right now. We've been doing R and D ourselves, mm -hmm. and we started over 12 months ago mm -hmm. and, and our, our anticipated beta release date is in December, which is 24 months in. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, and so we're really, what we're projecting from the time we started was three years out to what we needed to do. <laughs> and it's kind of like, it's almost like a fog, right? How do you see that far? Um, you know, but what on the short term, at least in, in a service industry, we're a new business person that's only been around for a year or two, which is probably the, the predominantly some of our biggest uh, followers here on this podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, at least we hope they're following. Um, <laughs> is, 
you know, this the cycles of our annual uh, uh, sales numbers, right? Um, y there's no getting around it. Uh, no, November comes around. You've October, November. We September, October, November. And once you start going into the last quarter, last quarter is not as good as the third quarter. Mm -hmm. It never is, right? People usually aren't looking to list their home or try to go out and buy a new home at Christmas. Um, some do, but you know, it's not as the numbers aren't as high as in August. And then in January, we, our January blew by because we had took it. We knew going into, into January that we were going to have more time available because we're not doing so many services out of our Glendora location and that a lot of franchisees would be slower. So we planned accordingly, right? We put, we put a, a essentially a three day conference together you know, and took a week out of our January to do that because it was the appropriate time of year to do it. Absolutely. And uh, one thing that um, actually one of our franchisees mentioned to me that kind of has to do with the planning ahead and looking ahead was uh, Rich in Henderson. I remember this was before the conference, but talking with him and for those who don't know Rich, he's a grinder and he, he he's fully committed to what we're doing here and fully committed to his business and uh, and his his franchise on business out in Henderson Nevada and he's pumped up for 2022 he was telling me that I'm, he goes by the rate that I feel like I, he he says I feel confident that by summer of 2022 towards like third quarter time he'll be in a position to where he can start looking to hire maybe someone um, to bring on as an employee to then carry into 2023 kind of with a head start um, and that's, I think that just popped in my brain. It's a good example of how planning he, ahead and expecting and what Rich does very well is his marketing pieces and the, his, the networks and connections and relationships that he makes in his business. I think he has a pretty good feel for the direction his business is going in with those relationships. And so he can take an educated look at the over overview and say, okay, if I'm doing X amount of inspections this month and then I'm carrying it over and adding bit by bit what is six months look what is seven eight months out look and then he's like okay at that point i'm going to need something to well, he, he, counteract it, right? he embodies what, what what we what we love around here he trusts in the process mm -hmm. right and and he has been committed to the process and i i know for a fact that he is kicking the competitions but with the marketing sales and promotion side of the business i mean he, he's just doing it and yeah, so no when, when you do that what is the re I mean, it, it, it doesn't, you, you don't make great numbers tomorrow, but you do that over a period of time and it's, it's cause and effect, mm -hmm. right? You, uh, this next summer, he's not going to be able to, I'm, he says this next summer. I mean, I, I don't have his numbers right in front of me, but come April, May, he, he, he may need somebody sooner than he thinks. Mm -hmm. I, I, I got to look at his numbers, but um, when, when I see when I see the indicators that come up in his in his reports, he, he's probably going to have a, get a phone call by me before he thinks he's even ready. Yep, and it's exciting. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in, whatever career industry you're in. It's all about, I think, setting expectations. And we touched on this last podcast, I believe, of wiping the New Year's resolution idea, but rather set goals for yourself and set attainable goals and objectives to get there. Um, and I remember, I forget if it was a church or where I heard this quote exactly, but it was the clearer your goals are, the easier your choices are. And so mm -hmm. if you set expectations for yourself and you set timelines and objectives, objectives how to get there, when a situation comes across of whether or not this, the decision you're going to make is going to be beneficial or not, you really don't have a decision at all because at that point you know exactly if I don't do this, it's not going to take me in the direction I already plan on going. So then you really don't have a decision. You've got to go down the path that leads you to where you're going. And um, that stuck with me for a while. Um, I, I just like the, like the mindset of that, of eliminate decisions by having clear goals, because then anything that's outside of that, that path, um, is a no. And it's just, it, if it doesn't take me there, why even bother kind of put time and effort into it. And I thought that was kind of a neat, a neat thought process. Oh, a hundred percent. And if you can't, if you can't figure out on the most basic, simple, simple level of what that means mm -hmm. and how to interpret what Chase just said, um, give us a call because we, we can help you with that. I, I, I can tell you just for me, the first thing that popped into my head when I was brand spanking new, if I wasn't inspecting, I was in front of a realtor. Mm -hmm. 
and that that's exactly what that was right my goal was to increase the number of inspections i got yeah to grow my business so i could you had the choice right it's you could have you could have not been inspecting and go i'm gonna go home and relax or i'm gonna go to the bar and watch the game or the movies or whatever right but is that going you were on a path and you had a you had a focus and expectation for yourself and goals for yourself and so those things are just they're just wiped off the table as even an option at that point because right. you're, it, you're focused. But these weren't even decisions. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just you just do it. it, it it's it's who I was. Mm-hmm. I was my, I was somebody who I had kind of a mono mono. This is what I want. This is what I'm working toward. This is what we're gonna do. And so this is there's no more choices. This is what I do to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, I'm not being true to myself. You know, and yeah. now I'm not. I'm living haphazardly and and and. If you, if you want to own a business and have not be an entrepreneur and kind of work towards something, you can't do that. Yeah. And anyone who's ever been in that position of dedicating their time and energy to something so hard and focused that, like you said, there's not even a decision to make because there's only, there's only this one thing in mind. Yeah. Uh, then, then, then you get exactly what we're saying and it's crystal clear to you. Like an example that comes to me is like for me personally, working on a, of obtaining different certifications and licenses to develop myself professionally and grow my personal career right and everything i set expectations in terms of i said by the end of january i'm going to be done with this from the time i started i'm going to be done with this there's no ifs ands and buts kind of deal about it i'm going to get it done and then it came to where it was like mid-january i wasn't finished yet and i was like i know i can finish it and the choice was like do i go out to dinner or go out to hang out with buddies or is it do i sit do i chill tonight and hang out at home and just grind and bust my butt and get it done because i set that goal for myself so how can i break that goal or that expectation for myself and just getting it done and so it's just i think if you set timelines i think that's one big component that a lot of people miss when they set goals is set timelines because if you set timelines it kind of puts for me it reminds me like school projects or like or for instance like your boss or your old boss telling you to do something you didn't i need this done by friday it's not like uh, i'll get it to you maybe if friday comes along you know what i'm gonna push it to tuesday it's like you don't have that you don't have that option everyone's been in that position right and so put do the same thing for yourself of set timelines and expectations to where like if it needs to be done by friday get it done by friday no, if it needs to be done by Friday. You get it done Tuesday, Thursday afternoon. Yep, and or, so you have time to review it, right? And you can review just, it Friday morning. It's already done. Yeah, but be, the, the, the yeah the point of take some self responsibility, right? And because at any point in time, if you ever work for someone, you're going to be delegated a task to be doing a certain time, and so you're never going to if you're not questioning that person and like if you're listening to them, mm-hmm. why wouldn't you do the same thing for yourself, right? It's just kind of that the mindset of it all and when you're especially if you're kind of venturing out and doing something new for yourself um for instance purchasing a morrison plus property inspections franchise uh uh, one of my favorite things to throw out there um then that's important right it's you're a new business owner you have an opportunity um to really hit the ground running if you dedicate your focus um your your energy in the right direction um and kind of follow the process that we got going along and if that sounds like you or sounds interested to you um, give us a call. Our phone number is 866-881-5027 or visit our website, morrisonplusfranchise.com for more information. I'd be happy to chat with you. Um, but yeah, I mean, in all seriousness though, that's one of the huge benefits or I think our franchise owners reap from us is the support to kind of set those goals and set those objectives. Um, I know you've had plenty of conversations with franchise owners of what are your objectives and I know we were speaking about um, Blake, for instance, mm-hmm. a year ago of, hey, dude, you need another inspector by by the end of uh, spring. Otherwise, you're going to be screwed, right? In terms of too much work that he can't handle it, right? right? He, all the marketing efforts and it, uh, resources he's exhausting are going to be finite, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, a lot of the work he's done is going to be like sand going through a strainer. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you're, he's going to be like a hamster on a treadmill. And so, and, and other franchises will gobble it up or other companies will gobble it up. Um, and so, uh, you, you know, you want to you reap as much fruit from the tree <laughs> that, 
<laughs> that you've been watering uh, as you can. And so it's like, you know, if you're going to sow the seed, you better be ready to, you know, reap the harvest, right? And so. Absolutely. And again, that's just, that's one of my favorite things, I think, of working alongside these franchise owners who are ambitious and they're out there hustling for their career and this career change that they made and jumping into a lot of them for a lot of them in a brand new industry of being able to be in a kind of a strategic beneficial partnership with each other to where we can rely on each other to help each other grow right. um and it's it's neat to see a franchise owner call in for a question with marketing or a question or they need help with something they can't figure something out but they knew that they could reach out to us and get the help that they need um right. and that otherwise in a situation if they're on their own they would just have to figure it out the hard way like you did many years ago that is obviously a lot more time consuming and a lot more expensive <laughs> Well, I mean, look, the, 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 something we've experienced as an emerging brand, uh, do franchising for the last few years, right, is sometimes people don't want to, can't handle the truth. I mean, I, I mean, you know, I know it's you know, Jack Nicholson's line from, I can't remember the name of that movie, but um, he said, you can't handle the truth. Well, some people really can't, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, they feel like I'm going to do it my way because the truth is too painful. You know, um, and that's something that affected my life in a big way when I was younger. And, and I think everybody understands what I'm talking about. When you have to actually accept the truth, when somebody gives it to you, this is what it is you got to do, whether, uh -huh. and a lot of times it's spend more money and put yourself out there. Now you got to produce because you got to bring in the enough overhead to pay out those bills, like signing a five-year lease mm -hmm. and you've never had a $2,000 a month lease. Right. right. You know, you better now make your business go for the next five years and you better grow so you can pay the lease. Right. Right. Because uh, now you got to get phones, you got to get computers and you can't just put all that money in your bank account anymore. That's very painful. You know, uh, you have to commit to yourself sometimes and the tr sometimes people can't handle that and they just can't push out of their comfort zone. And then sometimes it's like, hey, look, no, don't do that that way. Right. Uh that's not the correct way to do that. You need to hire an employee to do this. Um, and you, they need to do this. And this is the job description. You can't hire an employee to do half a job description and somebody else's half a job description. Right? Otherwise, you don't really have them doing a really good job at either one. Yeah. Um, much less, they're not going to stay long. You're going to have turnover. Yeah. You know, anybody that's, that's strong in business management knows that. But a new business owner might think, I can rob Peter to pay Paul or I can kill two birds with one stone and I'm gonna be more efficient. No, you're not, but sometimes that's the truth, but people don't wanna hear that. Um, and so uh, that's, that's something that, you know, I think we all need in business and it's really nice to have accountability partners. I, I, I've been using that term a lot more lately. Who are we partnering with? Who are our partners? Mm -hmm. You know, not who are our vendors, who are our partners? And that, because that's exactly what it is, right? I mean, it's, yep. it goes beyond the label of just a vendor or a franchisee. Like we're, we're partners in business. We're relying on each other to be successful. Um, and everyone plays an integral part it, because if our, if our print shop isn't working, if our print, <laughs> our, if our, <laughs> we're, we're, we're SOL in a lot of ways. Right. And so it, it, we have to rely on each other at least for a couple, two, three weeks. Right. It's like, it, it, it's at least it stings a little bit, right. At a bare yep. minimum. So, um, that's something I've learned for sure that everyone, everyone plays an integral part in each other's business. Mm -hmm. Um, especially when you're part of a brand. Uh, but it's, it's neat though, when you're able to see everyone come together in a brand, that was one of my favorite parts about the conference we had in January. Yeah, taking a moment, I kind of just took a reflection moment of taking a step back and seeing everyone in the room mm -hmm. sitting down and then kind of making, even though I already knew it, but still kind of just awakening the fact of, wow, like there's actually a room full of people here that are committed to what we're doing. Right. Right. And even, even cooler is, I mean, I, I believe in trusting everyone. Right. But seeing like the folks like I specifically brought in too, like yeah, that, that, making that like kind of right. distinction and seeing that in reality um, 
it's pretty neat. I and mean, and seeing them all be the camaraderie with each other and right. everyone laughing and hanging out and learning from each other. It's, it's something. It's something special. Contrasting to our, what are we doing? Or what uh, is what we're actually doing here? Helping them to be better. Mm-hmm. I I think the uh, the the leadership we had in that conference, maybe not the leadership, but the uh, the speakers. Mm-hmm. Uh, which that's leadership, right? Uh, you know, the people that were teaching on the subject matter that they were up front teaching about. Wow. I mean, I, it was damn near enjoyable. And we're a property inspection franchise. How much more <laughs> boring do you get than that? Right. Yeah. You know, but we, they, they were fun and they were, it, they made everything like engaged. People, yeah, people were fired up. You got the crowd interacting with each other and it yeah. was, it was cool. It was honestly very, very cool to see. Um, and I think everybody, there was not a person that walked out of there that was, was not better for it. Yeah. I think it's, it's different because uh, I, I guarantee you every single franchisee walk, walked in the dorm. And- the first day. The first day and was like, what is this? What, 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 right. what are we doing? What, what are we what, getting into? I want to be out doing my inspections, making money. Why, what, I, yeah, I don't exactly. want to be here. Why is my time here for the next three days oh, every, where I, I could be out scheduling and making money Yeah, or doing anything else? Yep, yep. And I, I think it's it, it kind, of, kind of brings them back to ground in the essence that, oh, it's a company that wants you to be successful. We're not just trying to grow, but we're trying to grow with you as well. Well, we were, we're well. That was the whole theme of the conference, right? For one us, brand, one, one brand, vision. one vision. Yeah. A big important part for us is to get everybody kind of excited about that. That what we're doing, what, what we're doing here, mm-hmm. right? And uh, what the franchise system's about. It's like if you buy a Chick Fil A franchise, <laughs> everyone's excited to own their Chick Fil A franchise or Canes or yeah. uh, Yogurt Land or what you know, um, uh, or you know whatever franchise they're going into. It's like we're all about it, and so that was kind of what our theme of our conference was. But to to pull that off, we had to really make them feel like they every single session was a benefit to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, if every single session wasn't a benefit, we weren't doing our job. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I I think we I think we actually accomplished it. <laughs> we did. We did. Uh, it was uh, it was a great event. And uh, when I mean, you have an employment attorney firing yeah, up the whole room and everybody yeah. getting all excited at between four o'clock and five o'clock in the afternoon, I mean, that's insane. Yeah, yeah. that was was that, that Devin, was that Devin. day three too? That was on day three. No, day two. That was day two. Day two. Day two. Day two. Day two. But still, that was but a long day. Two day two was pretty full too, though. Yeah. Day two was a long day, and everyone was still fired that up was in the afternoon to hear some employment law. Um, employment law. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun to say the least. But again, yeah, just, I guess to to, to kind of wrap us up here. Um, it's a it's a neat thing when you're able to work as a large brand together mm-hmm. and play a part in each other's businesses and allow each other to benefit from each other and also set those goals and expectations and have those accountability partners like you said mm-hmm. um, and just planning ahead for yourself and for your business and being smart about your decision making in terms of um, tracking your expenses or just just monitoring yourself and knowing that the decisions you're making are following that path of where you want to go. Um, and just looking ahead to the future too. Uh, I think that was kind of the biggest moral of it all. Just look ahead to the future and set those goals and expectations for yourself. Absolutely. It's a game uh, of chess. Well, entrepreneurship, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, owning your own business, setting your own hours. Now it's kind of like Boy Scouts, just just one hour a week, but it, no, it turns out to be more than that. Uh, owning a business and being an entrepreneur is very beneficial, uh, but you get to do all the things to help make it be a success. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, like what Mackenzie also just said too, it's a game of chess, right? You got to play a couple hand, couple moves ahead and think critically about what you're doing. Don't just yep. go out there and just start throwing stuff against the wall. So, yeah, well, I mean, it's it's real world strategy, honestly, because it's it. it I guess you can you can set yourself up for failure because there's obstacles that the other person is going to go and take, right? And well, you they're, have to they're be kind of ahead in order to be strategic about your moves. Maybe some moves are to block. Well, maybe yeah. some moves are to advance. Maybe right. Some moves will hold you back. Like that, that's right. just part of being in a business, and that's your own game. Well, when you're out there in the game too, it's very important to recognize that there's other people out there better than you. Yeah, hundred percent. There's always other people, other always. people out there. I mean, maybe not Jeff Bezos <laughs> <laughs> or Elon Musk, right? Uh, but but, but eventually guys, there will be. Absolutely. The, you know, I mean, innovation. 
I mean, that's look. It, they're not new. When they were new, there were people better than them. Yep. Yeah. And they had to improve and get better and learn. Um, and I, I love this old saying that I always tell people is, what's the difference between the greatest women and men in history and then from you or me? Time. No, no. The greatest the greatest women in, in history, the greatest men in history, want to know how they failed each and every single day so they can improve upon it and be better. Okay, yeah. I mean, That's not right. everybody, but well, we were just talking about earlier, can handle the truth. Yeah, that ties yeah. back into walking the truth, right? I know you've touched on that before of just self-recognition, right? And yeah. just what what did I do wrong? What did I do right? Mm-hmm. And just looking to continually improve and not just be complacent or not just That's sit back and take it for what it is. That's intelligence right there. If you know what the truth is and discerning the difference between what's truth, what's fact, and what's not, and what's real, and what's going to help you be better, mm-hmm. help you make more money, is just the decisions of your day tomorrow, mm. right? What's the best decision for me to make for my day tomorrow to get the most out of my day? Mm-hmm. It's not that easy. <laughs> it's just not. Um, uh, and so, uh, but that's what the difference is. And you know, in, in, that's why franchising is so great because you have big brother standing behind you, yep. and, right? Yep. And we talked about that. You, you have, it doesn't matter what franchise system you're in, but starting a business on your own you know, when you're in a franchise system, they're there to help you pretty much. It's a well-rounded oiled machine. Mm. Um, it's not a new company, mm-hmm. yep. right? And you're just stepping into place and following the, the program. Yeah. Sure. At the end of the day, nothing's easy. Nope. But being a more simplest property inspector, franchisee is a whole lot easier than a lot of other choices so uh um, we think so we believe so uh, <laughs> so give us a call like i said 866-881-5027 or visit morrisonplusfranchise.com but other than that Dwayne, i think uh we're gonna wrap it up here i know uh okay. friday friday evening is calling the weekend is calling um weekend is calling right and getting prepared for uh for the following week but uh, again i want to remind everyone to like and subscribe uh to all of our videos um, share our videos as well. Hit the notifications button. That way you continue to get updates. Every time we drop a new piece of media, whether it be a podcast or any other kind of videos or content that we're going to put out for you guys, we got big plans for 2022. Um, looking to continue to develop ourselves and, and just pushing for um, innovation and new and exciting things. So yep. yes, again, uh, hopefully everyone, we'll be in a new studio here. In the next oh yes. Month. Yeah, yeah we, should, we should be well, in, in, coming, in, in a new so. studio here shortly. So, uh, again, hopefully a couple new franchisees too. Yeah, hey, we'll absolutely. See. Absolutely. So everyone out there, stay safe, stay healthy, um, and we'll be seeing you guys uh, on the next episode.